Mr. Jacobs and Mrs. McGinnis, what I would like to do is start, please, with the rolling stock. Here we go. We're rolling now. I hope so. Now, I went through the pages, and thank you very much, because Mr. Jacobs has been kind enough to color code and segregate by section in public works. This is your largest department in this community. What I did was go through the rolling stock pages, and the rolling stock tends to get overlooked. I begged for a couple of years while I sat on the board to review it. The total value. Can I ask where that rolling stock is? It's in the back. It's in the back. Back, back. It's in the back. fire, and you did public work. E. the last in the Appendix back. Appendix E. Now, I went through and added up the future replacement cost columns. And if all of the material that Chris has down at Public Works was suddenly taken away by the tornado, it would cost us six million forty-five thousand and sixty-one dollars to replace all of that equipment. And if you watched the selectmen's meeting last evening for some of the Public Works warrant articles, uh, you heard some of the discussion on uh, some of the replacement and some of the equipment that we are talking about. On the first page, number 43, Chris, the freight liner. I have to ask a point of order. Yes, sir. Why are we talking vehicle rolling stock when I thought we were here to talk about the operating budget? You are going to talk about the operating budget, but I'm tired of having the rolling stock ignored, and you discussed it last night as part of your article, as and we have article. a lot right. of money okay. invested in our rolling stock. Our, uh, item 43 on the first page of the freight line, or you know how I feel about the freight line. Yeah. How long is it going to sit Thank there? You. Is it really being used? I think the freight liner you're talking about is the one we use for the sludge transportation. It's either mm. 82 or 85. So this it's doesn't say good. sludge. It's dump and plow. This is a dump truck. Oh. Number 43. Well, we'll keep it in the fleet as long as 2001. So we can replace it. And it's got 34,000 miles on it. But that's the kind of thing that makes people cross because you have pieces of equipment that sit and sit and sit and sit. And, I don't know, 2001. You have 16 pickups. I did total the pickups. I think there were 19 a couple of years ago. Okay, you've got on the second page, page two of three of the highway inventory, um, you've got the John Deere Uni loader. You're showing that as a 10, which is pretty awful condition. Have thoughts of replacing it? Is it still usable? It's still usable, but it's not what I would call a frontline vehicle. Okay. But it's it's a, it's like a skid steer. It's, we use it for yeah. occasionally. For instance, we keep um, coal patch during the winter inside yeah. the garage. Uh, if we brought in a backhoe to move it, we'd probably bang into about ten things trying to get it out. So the skid steer, uh, a number of years ago, my understanding is that it was gonna be sold to somebody for like fifty bucks. That you know that it has more use to us than 50 bucks. Oh. So it's we do use it to move sandbags, like during rain events. It's it's predominantly used inside. Okay. The materials handle. I just felt kind of so, sorry for it. The reason why I say okay, it's a 10. It's not what I'd call a glorious piece of equipment. Okay. The tires are kind of bald on it, but is it adequate for what we're using it for? Yes. Oh. Okay. Is it, 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 right. It's the kind of piece of equipment that would save on a back injury or a wearing my staff out instead of hand lifting sandbags, and that's why we keep it around. Okay. Now, 90, 91, 92, and 95 are the international sidearm packers. Right. Um, I thought we only had three. We have three sidearm packers, right? There they are. Yeah. One, well, two, three. I'm seeing the uh, I'll, three uh, sidearms. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got 90, 91, 92, and 95 that says international 7,420 songs. They are international 20, 20 trucks. 20, oh, okay. But, they're, we, but the they're three are loaders. the sidearms. Right. right. There's three sidearm and three rear load. 
Okay, and it's showing a replacement cost of around 300000 now. Now, you were talking about replacing a couple last night? Well, it's it came up in the discussion a couple of weeks ago. I had, I've got a new, uh, in September we hired a new maintenance, vehicle maintenance foreman. His name is Joe Gallagher. I tasked Joe about a month ago with coming up with, tell me what it's cost us over the last five years to maintain the sidearm packers versus the rear packers. Um, and also he went ahead and looked up what it had cost to maintain the trailers. Yep. Our tra transfer trailers. Because I'm in the process of writing an update, if you will, to the solid waste study that was done five years ago. Mm -hmm. Without facts and figures, mm -hmm. I'm hand stuck. What we found is in five years we would spent two hundred thousand dollars maintaining the sidearm packers. Uh, at the same time we've spent one half that amount just maintaining the rear loaders. Mm -hmm. So while they're a, a much more efficient, the, the sidearms, mm -hmm. while they're a more efficient piece of equipment for, in, as in they can pick up more carts per hour, mm -hmm. and I don't have somebody on the back who could fall <coughs> off or injure themselves, they are an expensive piece of equipment to maintain. Mm -hmm. uh, in Last year when I came before uh, you and, and we were having the, dis and I don't mind having this discussion because it directly relates to vehicle maintenance lines that are within the mm -hmm. operating budget. Yeah. Like for instance, last year it was like ninety thousand dollars to maintain, uh, in rough figures, the vehicles. And you said, "Wow, it's a lot of money. Where did it all go?" Well, one third of it actually went to the rear packers, or to, uh, sorry, to those sidearm packers. Mm -hmm. uh, joysticks wear out at two thousand dollars a piece. Front hydraulic pumps wear, wore out. Um, two out of three this year have had to have their uh, emissions regeneration systems. It's we saw smoke that last sack. night. Yeah. Rebuilt <coughs> because they're physically worn out. Mm -hmm. um, not so much a function of miles, but hours on the vehicles. Mm -hmm. So, um, when we look at replacement vehicles in the future, and when we look at the solid waste collection, the true cost of solid waste collection in the future, I want to take those types of numbers and values into consideration. May I ask you a stupid question? This question is stupid. You know that. What is the saving? What is the corresponding saving? Because we understand the maintenance costs are high. Of having only one employee driving the sidearms as opposed to the salaries of individuals, two or three individuals on the Packers. Is there a saving, a corresponding saving that gives you a little leeway from the maintenance part? It's less expensive to maintain those sidearm packers than it would be to put two people on the back of a rear loader. I will give you that. Okay. Because you have to look at not only the salary, yep. but the benefits of health insurance, uh, state retirement system, the town's contribution to the retirement package. Um, all those things, each each individual is somewhere over $100,000 a year. Yep. So in five years, you'd have been talking two people times three trucks times five years yep. do the, it's quick math but it, so yeah it's cheaper it's less expensive to maintain these automated trucks but it still does come at a cost mm -hmm. That's okay I appreciate the clarification okay on the bottom of the page the roller paving roller it says it's a 10 the poor little thing is it still usable it, it's usable. It, it's something that um, when we use it on a seasonal basis, we come in and spend a week working on it and get it back running. It's like the little engine that could. Okay. And, um, but uh, it's, at some point, I mean, we even had the situation this summer where it literally died while we were doing the, the patching, and the, the milling and the patching operations. We went down to try all and rented one for about a week to the hours back get yeah. the parts in to get ours back and running. Did I hear you last night talking about replacing the yard horse? I thought you replaced it this year. No, it, it, I misspoke. I thought we were talking about putting it on the, uh, the warrant. Um, but as you could probably tell from last night's description or d discussion, that particular warrant article has gone a number of iterations. Yes, I um, saw that. 
as a department, we're having to make some tough choices. Would we rather have a, the yard, the yard force we have literally just grabs the trailer and pulls it around. Right. The problem that we had is, for instance, 18 months ago when we had a trailer fire, we didn't have a vehicle on site that had a hydraulic capacity or, or even ability to exercise the trailer so that we could put the fire out. We literally had to wait uh, for, uh, we were waiting for our transport carrier to, to show up with his truck. Um, so that's one of the deficiencies. The other thing is it's a, uh, uses an air bladder system and it's a 20 year old air bladder and uh. it leaks a lot. So it's one of those things if we had our druthers, would we, would we replace it? Yes. But when we compare that against right. the operating cost of the sidearm. <coughs> you got a lot of equipment, sir. Madam Chairman, I have a question before you move too further, far away yes, from the hackers. You're saying in everyday language that the sidearm. Can't arm, hear you. The sidearm packers, in view of the cost, they cost more to maintain. They still, they still use a lot less uh, manpower. If, if you look at the, that versus, let's say, the rear packer and what it would cost for manpower, yes. Okay, so I guess my question is because I think we bought these when I was a selectman, and I was, um, I thought we were doing the right thing at the time. And I still think they're a wonderful idea. And I wasn't thinking about the maintenance so much as I was the fact that people are jumping off and on the back of the dump truck all the time, the packers, I mean, to pick up the trash. Yep. And with some of the nice winners we have, uh, there's an outstanding good chance that they're going to get hurt. You're right. And Selectman Griffin reminded me of that, that is part of my analysis. I have to take into account workers' comps, claims, and mm -hmm. uh, Law, injuries due to that those kind of things. So, I mean, if I have to choose between spending a little extra on maintaining them versus exposing people to more of a dangerous situation, I would definitely go for, if it, even if it costs a little more to maintain the packers, the automated arms, because they're easier on people. I would agree. So you'll move my vehicle maintenance line when it comes around? <laughs> yeah, I might chop it down a bit. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Chris, if you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, will go to the transfer station inventory because the ejection trailers are there. Did I hear you saying something about the trailers last night? There was a lot to take in when you guys were yeah, talking. Yeah. Um, yeah, update us on the trailers. On, on average, it takes about $10,000. It's taken $10,000 over the five years to maintain the trailers. Uh, yeah. Why? They, they, they do use tires. Um, they, on occasion, have jammed up. We've had a fire in one of them. Yeah. Um, it's hard to believe, but like the ones that handle the recycling, the glass and the cardboard is very abrasive. Oh, yeah. And it's actually wear, wearing off the bottom plate in the ram face. It's, it's more abrasive than just trash. Mm -hmm. So um, they do have a defined life. Um, we have five of them, but I can tell you on the big weekends, Memorial, July 4th and Labor Day, we run out of capacity to, to mm -hmm. manage solid waste. Um, we traditionally use three trailers for recycling and three for refuse. Um, at least twice this year, we've had to take a full recycling trailer and empty it on the ground so that we could connect it back to the transfer station to put trash mm -hmm. in because yeah. we can stand the odor of recycling but not trash and and, and it's also a health concern Chris, you've got six trailers here and you're yeah. all showing you're showing all of them as a condition one because they're good serviceable trailers yes okay so are you you are or you are not looking for more trailers. I am looking for more trailers just to literally handle the surge. Similar type Right. Trailers. But the other thing is, uh, we've re one of the other reasons why we wanted a new yard horse is we snapped a set of legs right off a trailer because the yard horse didn't grab the trailer. So the trailer literally slid, slid mm -hmm. and when it slid, it snapped its yeah. downward legs. That's a $2,000 fix. 
But well, you're showing you're showing six here, all in good condition. So we should put a line through one of them. Uh, oh no no six. no, no. they're all six well, operating. That's what I'm asking. You said five. Okay. Oh, you did said I say five? five? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we have sorry. Gordian slip. No, we have six, and they're they're all in good operating. <laughs> okay. All right. I just wanted to check. And then on the um, page one of one wastewater treatment plant. We got a Chevy pickup that's showing 10. Uh, it says ejected. You, you dumped it? It's no longer with us. It's no longer with you. No okay. Longer. And then, uh, Mr. Which one were Clef? you just referring to? Number uh, It's the 83, uh, 82. Wait a minute. 23. 20, 23. Sorry about that. 23. Right. Okay. When we, when so that's we purchased, gone. based on last year's warrant article, when we okay. purchased uh, our new one ton and the two new six-wheel dump trucks. Mm -hmm. Got it here somewhere. Oh, that's back in here. Unit Unit 23 yeah. is no longer on the site. It's yeah, been okay. traded in. 19 is no longer on the site. It's been traded in. And uh, from the first front page, Unit 18 has been traded in. It's no longer on site. Unit 36, which was the one time it's been traded in all. Okay, it says they're placing next to 18. The reason why I bring that up is I know I three years that. ago, you one of the comments was, well, shouldn't we just be putting these in the auction? Yeah. My res response yeah. to you was no, and you thank you for supporting and yeah. giving me the time to prove it. But each one of these trucks went for about $2,000 to $2,500 on paper. There was no one else that would even give you 500 for them. Yeah. Okay, so... That's why we kept them around. But notice that we traded in three pickups in a one ton to get one. one. Yeah. Okay. All right. You want to talk about sludge trucks? Yeah. They yeah. still got them. Oh, is the is the let's see. is eighty two being used as an alternate? Now yes, that's... about one day a week. Okay. The so re it's... I did look, and you wanted to know why it was parked where it's parked. Mm -hmm. We have it plugged into an electric heater. Oh, okay. That's the outlet. Poor little fella. Okay, now, just clarify for us, because it's my understanding that you have to be, you have to be removing the sludge every day. Yes. I'll so you that. can't afford to have the one sludge truck in case it breaks down? Do you need sure. the second one? Especially during the summer. During the summer, we're up to two containers per day right. of sludge. And there will be days, for instance, because waste management is, is an open and can't accept the sludge. Mm -hmm. We'll literally work overtime to urge ourselves of sludge right? so that then we have three or four days to fill two roll-off containers. Yeah. And then when that it reopens, we're up there with probably both trucks. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions on the rolling stock? I it think is. the rolling stock is an important part of your operation. And it tends to get bypassed. <coughs> and nobody would listen to me last year about reviewing rolling stock, and they haven't done it this year. But I thank you for helping us go through that. All right. Because that's important to you. You have a question, Mr. Jones? I do. Uh, Mr. Plouff is our DPW go-to guy. Mm -hmm. What should I take away on the rolling stock? What should you take away? Take away in terms of making note of and so forth. How's things look from your point of view? I, I haven't even been in there this year. Uh -huh. I haven't looked. Did you try? Did I try? Yeah. No. Okay. So we don't have that issue this year. That's good. <laughs> That's right. There you go. So everything, more or less, as far as you can tell, is, is on the up and up. Everything's cool. Yeah. Okay, good. You Chris. gave them a mini view on Levitt Road. Uh-huh. You get a what? We gave you a mini view on Levitt Road. Yeah. Okay. Well, when it comes to DPW, he's our guy, so I go to him for... I understand. Yeah. 